This is the home. This is where I've been now for some time. Uh, on and off, depends where I've managed to get some work uh, in between. This is where I park in the evenings and then I get up early in the mornings at uh, 4 o'clock, somewhere around there. And when I was here the last time, I parked up on that end over there and then we were all chased out of here. But we parked up at then on the other side of another parking area next to another shopping centre there at Flamingo Square. But returned here. Now I'm on my own here. And the others that were with me have all scattered and they've moved to other places and that. The authorities, the Cape Town Council, in this area anyway, they, they don't really see the, the urgency and the severity of the situation because you, you, you really don't have a place to park and stay. You are parking sort of illegally in places where they want to move you off all the time, even right here. And it's, it's actually frustrating and there's a lot of people that are actually now landing up in their cars. They have the same situation. They don't know where to go. I've uh, been with this car for a long time. I've had it myself for more than 30 years already. Uh, my two daughters were babies when I had this car. And uh, of course, um, it's been through a lot of weather, a lot of bit of wear and tear, but it's still going pretty well. I wouldn't say it's not in a, that it's in such a bad condition. It doesn't look too good because it's got a whole lot of these marks in it and rust and that, but it's going to need a bit of TLC. My bed here in the back is with a mattress and that. This is what I have with me all the time. And my stone sage, Sam, is over here to greet me every morning and uh, start my day. But uh, it's been a long sojourn, and, uh, and in this situation, um, one doesn't always feel comfortable, um, you know, um, you don't always feel like you're even part of the family, maybe, you might sometimes just feel like you're not, you're not in it, you actually aren't, because you actually become sort of sidelined a bit. It's almost like, um, from the family's perspective, it's looked like I've just sort of gone off the tracks and I've disappeared into the bush. It's like I've sort of gone off into the, un the, the road less traveled than that. Uh, but let's face it, that road less traveled has been quite an experience. It's opened my eyes to a lot of things. I've landed up because of uh, two factors, bad decisions, but also bad luck. I've had bad twists come in, the, in my working career. There are times when you're down, but I keep up, upbeat all the time because I maintain a good spirit and I maintain a good positive approach to life, even if it brings these challenges and you can get down very quick. But um, it's something that I've managed to get right. I've actually had to uh, begin writing a book in that, which is what I've made a decision to do because of the experiences I've had in the Great White and the time that I've been on the streets. I would like to see that I make progress with my book so I can get that published. I go here every day to the library. This is my office here every day. Uh, I have to make use of it because I can't sit and do nothing all day. I can't just sit in my car and waste time. Um, I have to get in there, uh, get, get contact with the outside world. I've got to put forward my CVs, my credentials, whatever, all my experience. It hasn't been easy because of course, you know, um, the situation that I'm in. And uh, me being a qualified horticulturist, I've got a, a good amount of experience. I'm an ecologist, I'm a botanist even. Um, I'm very much clued up with uh, the plants, the cycad plants, the conifers, they are my favorites, my trees, those are the trees that I'm a real, you can say I've gone into a lot with them. I want to see a change and I'm upbeat about it, growing plants, growing vegetables, uh, doing aquaponics or becoming a teacher of conifers, cycads, whatever. But as soon as I've got the, the old lady uh, back on track with normal uh, running properly, the Great White's uh, got a, a few things that need to be attended to, uh, yeah, going for a few operations here and there. I just know that all the hardships that I've had has taught me to see that the, the road to, to reaching God 
in the end is not always an easy, it's not just an easy road to get there. You sometimes have to take the hard road, the road that's less trodden on, the one that's in the, that's, that's gone off the beaten track. I talk here in my car, I talk to God and I talk to the angels. And that's why in all this time that I've been around and I've gone through this, I know that I've had that protection. I've had a woman that's even going to be mentioned in my book, uh, Devorah, I think was her name, I could be corrected. But she's, she was a prophetess that came and parked her at some stage about five, six years ago, I think it was in 2016. She was watching me for a few days when I'd been parking here. And then one, after, one evening she approached me in the car and she said, you know what, I just want to tell you something, you are protected. And I said, why do you say that? So, so she said, because I can see it. I, I know that your car is protected by angels. And she said that on one occasion she saw a number of people hanging around your car. And she walked up to them and said, <clears throat> you see this man's the car that you have standing around you? She just said to them in a nice way, move away. Because this car here is protected. And... You mustn't stand around here by this man's car. These are my friends, and I feed them whenever I get a chance, as you can see. And I have many of them, different types of birds, here, but the gulls are here every day. And yeah, they get a good, a good portion of food from me every day. I feed them this bread, park here as well, but then when they come here, and they, they definitely are around. As you can see, there's other birds that come along there, and, and that's it. Built up a good community of friends.